Hi guys, Lemmy here. Welcome back to another art video. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Koi Watercolor Brush Pen Set of 24 colors. And this product is brought to you by the makers of the Jelly Roll Pen and also the Pigma Micron Pens. So this video is brought to you by Sakura. And you'll see a lot of videos on YouTube where people will use these jelly rolls, the white ones for highlights, and they will use these microns for inking their manga drawings. So these are pretty commonly used products by Sakura. But these are a little bit something special. So Koi is the brand for watercolor. So I'll be doing a review on Koi watercolors if you would like to check that out. I'll have the link in the description below. These are watercolor brush pens. So you can use these pens like markers or you can use them like watercolors. And I have done a review of these in the past where I reviewed a set of six colors, but they were gray. So there was a light, medium, and dark warm gray and a light medium and dark cool gray. So those were the six colors. I also used the colorless blender to blend the colors, but a water brush will work just as well or a brush with water. So this is what I'll be using. It's a Koi water brush and it is a medium. They have small, medium and large water brushes. And this is what I'll be using to blend my colors, not the colorless blender, but I will be using water. And these are really cool because it's kind of like having watercolors on the go, or you can just use them like markers. So I'm going to read off what the product says about itself because nothing's more frustrating than getting a product that doesn't do what it says it's going to do. So we're going to take a look. It says it is blendable, odorless, and water-based. Water-based means that when you put water to it, it will smear or smudge, which gives it that watercolor effect. So yeah, if you're going to spill water on your picture afterwards, I recommend that you do not do that unless you want a big watercolor blob. It is a flexible brush marker, which uh, it is brushed, so like any other brush sort of product, the tip will flex when you put it down, sort of like this picture below where it will become flat on the surface. But so depending on how much pressure you put down, you'll get, uh, well, I'll just read it here because it says it right here. Achieve fine, medium or bold brush strokes by changing the nib pressure. So that's what's cool about brush markers. The dye based inks blend easily to create a multitude of hues. And then it says down here, there's a little asterisk, ink is not waterproof or fade resistant. So a lot of watercolors have difficulty with fade fading. So you um, kind of want to seal them afterwards to try to prevent that, uh, prevent that from happening as much as possible. But all watercolors have that difficulty. Um, ink is not waterproof, which means that it does move around like watercolor. Um, and it says here, the special blender pen creates seamless washes and color gradations. And it's available separately. So it does not come with that. But like I said, we're gonna use the water brush and we'll get the same effects. And this is for ages 14 plus because you don't want children to, I guess, just stick it in their mouth and eat it. And then on the bottom, you can see all the different colors that you get here. So I should mention, that these are sold in sets of six. So there's the six grays and there was six colors. Um, and then there's a set of 12 colored and then a set of 24 colored, which is this one. And then there's a larger set of 48 colors, which comes in a nice case. It's a nice clear case. I believe it's made by Artbin. And that's the largest set that they have to offer. So with that, being said, you can see the colors up top. You'll get a row of nice warm colors and then a row of nice cooler colors. And we're going to get started shortly. First, I'm going to make a color swatch pad so you can see what all the colors look like laid down on the actual paper. Now, before I get started, it is important to use heavier weight paper. So like watercolor paper will work best because we're going to be doing watercolor type effects using these. And you don't want your paper to warp or kind of come apart and pill. So um, these are what the brushes look like. 
It says it's for students, graphic artists, designers, illustrators, architects, cartoonists. And I like that they label each color that they have here in case I guess you run out of specific colors. Maybe you can find it in a smaller set based on the ones that you use the most. They do not sell these pens individually, so you have to get them in a set. And here you can see the really pretty brush tip. And I'm going to get started on the swatch pad and then we'll meet back here for the coloring of my picture, which I'm going to try to show you, but it's probably going to be on an angle you won't be able to see. Um, see, look how bright that is. But is a picture of my character Gelato. I always draw her with ice cream. So we're going to be having the light coming probably from like this direction. So if you see a shadow on her face, it is the ice cream casting a shadow because it's going to fall on her. So if I color the skin first and you're all like, what the heck are you doing? That's kind of where we're gonna go with it. So we'll meet back here shortly. Now, I've mentioned before that I have previous experience with these pens, but all I had was a set of six grays. So I was able to use the same techniques that I used in my previous video, but use them with color, which was really exciting. Um, you can see here that the technique I mostly stick to that I really enjoy the most is taking each individual pen and scrubbing down on a piece of plastic like a palette and then using the water brush to scoop up that pigment, dilute it, do whatever I want to it before I place it down onto the paper. You can also directly put the marker onto the paper and then dilute it with the brush pen. So these, um, before in the description, they said that they're not waterproof. And what that means is that when it dries, it can reactivate. So like watercolor, you can take water to the same painting later and dilute the color, push it around, do other things to it. So <clears throat> you have to be a little bit careful with that, that the ink does not dry and stay. It can be reactivated later. And I really love watercolor, so I really like that it does that. And I think that this set is really great for getting into the whole mindset of watercoloring if you haven't watercolored before. There's something about it that's much simpler. You don't have to mix the paints in the palette and figure out how much water you want to put in. All you can do is, if you've had experience with markers, is just get straight into coloring. And then if you want something to be lighter, you add water to it. And just that sort of mindset is just, it's a lot easier for people to get used to water coloring that way and controlling the amount of water that you use in a painting. So um, I really like these pens for that. Also, they're really great on the go. There's only 24 of them in the set. It's pretty compact, so you can take it with you just to use them as markers, or you can bring a water brush pen and also make like a painting sort of thing with it. So it's really fun to use these 24 colors. They're really carefully chosen. I didn't feel like there was any colors in the set that I needed. I felt like all 24 of them is just what I needed to make a great picture and I didn't need another color more for that. Now they have a set of, I think it was like 48. I don't know what colors they're putting into that set, but it makes me super curious because I wonder what other colors that they would think about adding because I really didn't need any other colors. And they're bright, they're vibrant, they're really pretty and I just had a blast. They're really fun to use, and I, I really loved all the colors. You can see on the swatch how pretty they are to the left. I couldn't fit all of the colors on the swatch to the left, so I put a few on the back. There is a part of the video where you can quickly see me flip it over and you can see a few more colors on the back, but almost everything on the front of that swatch pad is what I used. I used almost all of the colors that I have for the picture. And yeah, I just, I loved it. I had so much fun. And you definitely should use watercolor paper because I could totally see using this on other paper would kind of raise it and destroy it and break it apart. So you wanna make sure that you're using the correct paper to get the best results that you can with these pens. So with all these great things that I said, cause I really like these, there is one thing that I did not like and that is really shallow and really dumb, but there's one part where 
I noticed, you can see on the swatch pad, that there's a dark brown and a brown. And I would immediately think that the dark brown would be darker than the brown. But that's not the case. The dark brown is actually much lighter than the brown. And it just, it's like a disconnect that confuses me because I like to, now I have Copics too, and all of the colors on the caps don't match what the colors look like. So I'm used to picking the colors of the Copics, not based on the color of the cap, but based on the name of the color. So when I look for colors, I won't go based off of the cap so much as the name of the color. So the dark brown is lighter than the normal brown. That just confuses me. And I guess maybe some guy made a typo or something, or maybe I had a defective set. I don't... I don't really know. It's not that big of a deal because the caps correspond with the colors. So if you're looking purely for the color of the cap to see which one's the lighter brown, which one's the darker brown, you can tell obviously, you know, which one is which. But for me, I was just like, wait, this is dark brown? That doesn't make any sense to me. So that was a little bit confusing. Um, and then I would have to say that the, because I mentioned that the colors of the Copic caps never match the pigment inside. I found that for the most part, these markers were very similar with the cap color. I would personally recommend that you do make your own swatch pad like I have, um, just so that you know exactly what color you're placing down before you actually put it down on the piece of paper because the caps are a little bit different from the pigment. Um, inside the marker and that's like I said a very normal occurrence but they are very close and you can see that I made a strip of color and towards the left is how it came from the marker and towards the right is what it looks like diluted with the water so I suggest that you do both so you can kind of see what colors you can get before you put them down it's just kind of uh, helpful to have that as a reference also the cap colors are so similar to the actual ink reference on the swatch pad that when you go to look for the color, it's easy to find the color that's associated with the swatch that you're looking at. So the caps were really nice. And yeah, it was just the dark brown that had the, the name confusion. But other than that, I really didn't have any problems with the markers. I love them. I love the colors and using them was just a whole lot of fun. So I hope that you guys found this review helpful. It's definitely a very nifty pack of markers to have on hand. And I will be using these again in the future just because they were so much fun to use. And I don't use, I don't say that lightly because some art supplies just aren't fun and they're kind of painstaking and annoying and frustrating, but these were just a lot of fun. So I really have nothing bad to say. Um, I hope that you guys like this review and I hope that I covered anything you had questions about. If I did not cover something that you wanna know about, please ask away in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. If you're asking me which colors I used for certain things, I might not be able to get back to you with that information because I don't remember quite frankly. But if you have a question on how to use a supply or something like that, that I went over in this little review, then I, I can totally get back to you on that and maybe have a few helpful suggestions. So thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you again next week in another video. Okay, bye guys!